All right, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to compare fuel economy or fuel efficiency between a gasoline and a diesel powered generator. Let's take a look at both units and uh, as well as the test rig and we'll get started. All right, first let's say a few words about both generators. We'll start with the gas engine. Now, many of you watched the uh, video that I put up a few months ago concerning this. This is a 1954 Onan 305 CK. 3,500 watts at 120 volts. In that video, we took a look at the unit, got it running, put it under some load, and uh, yeah, a lot of people watched that video. A lot of people found it interesting. This is uh, the gasoline example for this test. The diesel example I haven't had uh, on this channel before. This is a 1955 Onan 3DSP. This data tag's not in the best of shape. Built February 1955. This is 3,000 watts at 120 volt. It's a single cylinder indirect injected diesel engine. Now I've been wanting to make a bit of a fuel efficiency comparison video for a while now but I didn't have two similar units to compare. Well finally now I've got one. I've got a diesel from the 1950s and a gas engine from the 1950s built by the same company only months apart the generator ends on them are extremely similar, almost identical. The controls are a bit different, but that's irrelevant at this point. They both run at 1800 RPM. They're both very well built. Now, the gas engine, or the gasoline powered unit, is, or has, 16% greater capacity than the diesel. So when we get to actually calculating the difference in efficiency, we will have to take that into consideration. So the test rig looks a bit like this. The load will be provided by my 10 kilowatt simplex load bank. We're gonna be measuring the weight of fuel consumed over time I've got a glass jar. It's got graduations in uh, one quarter of a gallon, so the jar is total one gallon. And these are just for reference, really, these red lines, just for visual reference. We're going to be recording the weight of fuel, and we're going to be timing the runs. Now, I've got some information written down here. These are the values we're going to be using for the test. The gasoline I'm going to be using is 87 octanes, 10% ethanol, or up to 10% ethanol as it's labeled on the pump. Now, these numbers just came from the internet. Gasoline at 6 pounds per gallon, 2.721 kilograms per gallon, and has an energy content of 125,000 BTUs per gallon. And there's just some uh, information on the generator. The diesel fuel I'll be using is just number two ultra low sulfur diesel. Has a weight of 6.9 pounds per gallon. A weight of 3.145 kilograms per gallon. And it contains 138,700 BTUs of energy per gallon. And that, there's that note about the 16% difference in capacity. And I've got a little chart here. So we're gonna be operating them at no load 1,000 watt load, 1,750 watt load, and 2,250 watt load. I'm not going to run them at full load. I don't think it's worth doing on 50 plus year old gen sets. I don't want to risk damaging the generator ends. So this 2,250 watts is 75% of the diesel's rated load. Again, we're not going to go to 75% of the gas engine's rated load. We'll just take I have two col columns for gas, as you can see. We've got the gas actual readings, and then we've got the gas corrected readings. Since it's 16% greater capacity, we'll have to have a correct correction factor there, so we're actually getting uh, a true comparison, and then diesel. So we'll have grams used per hour, and then gallons per hour. 
I'm going to be taking the readings here from the scale in grams just to, you know, facilitate easier recording. Okay, we're ready to start the no load run on the gas engine. We got our initial weight here, 3,740 grams. About a gallon of gasoline. The engine's warmed up, it's primed. You know, I've let it run a few minutes with long enough to get the choke opened up. So it's running normally at no load. Uh, now, I just before we start, I wanna say a few quick things before we start the test. All right, these aren't new. They're not rebuilt, they, they run. I don't know the condition of the engines. I haven't done full teardowns. I know they run, and they run pretty well, and they carry a load. Now, things that I can't control. Exhaust. I don't want to change the exhaust on this generator because it's original and I like it and it's quiet. That muffler may be more restrictive than this muffler. In fact, I know it is because this thing has an exhaust leak up here somewhere. I'm not going to be concerned about that. That's, in my opinion, that's something I can't control. The air filters are different. There are, there are differences between these gen sets. This is not an apples to apples comparison. It's like, it's a red apple and a green apple. They're still, they're both apples, but they're not, they're not identical. So, with that said, you know, take these, take these results how you like. Uh, but I think a lot of people will find this interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and start this thing up. One other thing I can't control that I just thought of: the battery charge rate. Battery charge rate is. Adjustable on the large unit, on, on the diesel, I should say, it's not large. On the diesel, it is not adjustable on the gas engine. I'm going to operate the diesel at low charge rate. You know, that's a couple watts, couple, maybe 100 watts, 150 watts. Something I'm not going to worry about. So you can hear the gas engine's running. It's running right about 61 hertz. So we'll run the diesel at that same speed, no load. Go ahead and start the test. Starting weight, 3,712 grams. Almost at an hour. Once we get to an hour, I will record that weight and shut the generator down and connect the load bank and we'll get on with the first load test at a thousand watts. All right, so 2540. That's our end weight. Okay. Okay, we're now running under load, our 1,000 watt load. At 8.4 amps. About 119 volts, so we're, we're just a hair under a thousand watts, but it's close enough. So we're ready to start our test. Let's see where we're at. 3594. That's our starting weight. And there's our starting level. Alright, let the fun begin.
2,084 grams. down for a few minutes at no load. Then we'll refill and reset and go for our 1750 watts. Alright, we're at 1750 watts. Let's uh, get this test started. Start weight, 3546. See you in an hour. To the party. Let's call that 1756. Only about a minute past. Whoops, should have been paying attention. Reset for the final run. 75%. Oh, no, wait, not 75%. Uh, 2,250 watts. Alright, here's our final run. 18.3 amps. 121 volts. 120 volts. Just a hair under 2250, but that's about as close as I can get it with the load bag. 
I don't want to uh, I don't want to bother adjusting the speed up or anything. So starting weight 35 30. Here's where we're at, where we're at so far. No load, 1172 grams per hour. 1,000 watt load, 1510 grams per hour. 1750 watt load, 1790 grams per hour. Let's see what 2250 does. the load off of it. Okay, for the diesel test we have a bit of a change of venue. It moves everything kind of out here to the backyard toward the woods. Uh, just to kind of keep the noise away from the house. This uh, this unit does make quite a bit of noise being an air-cooled diesel, a lot of mechanical noise. So, otherwise the same thing, we got our fuel set up on the scale and the timer. Load bank is set up. Uh, the load bank is connected, but both output breakers are open. So we've got no load on the unit. Now, you keen-eyed viewers will notice that we only have one line coming from the fuel supply. And some people say, oh, well, usually there's a fuel return with a diesel. Well, there is a return line, so to speak, but it does not come from the pump. This is not like a, this is not a flow through system for the pump, at least. The only return line is a leak off line coming from the injector nozzle. This injector doesn't have a lot of uh, leak off. So I have the return line disconnected here from the tank, the main tank, which we're not using. You can see we're disconnected from the main tank and we're just plumbed to the uh, glass jar. If I start to see any fuel being emitted from that return line, um, I'll have to reevaluate the rig and return, have that fuel return back to the tank, or at least collect it so that we can weigh it and uh, add that to our calculations. So let's go ahead and start this thing up. I'm just going to leave it connected to the uh, putt putt tractor here.
484. That's our shutdown weight. Or end weight. Yeah, about all that smoke. This is an interesting unit, interesting design really, how they accomplish uh, starting and stopping of the engine. Obviously, it's exciter cranked, so the generator acts as a starting motor to turn the engine. This is what they call the decompression solenoid. So, at this state right now, with the solenoid de-energized, the unit has no compression. When you go to start the engine, you hit it to start, it begins cranking. Once the oil pressure reaches 10 PSI, the solenoid energizes and it allows the exhaust valve to close. It stops the unit, like you just saw, by de-energizing the solenoid, which props the exhaust valve open and allows the engine to, well, it drops the engine's compression and uh, uh, prevents it from firing. Although it's still injecting fuel, it's still trying to run, the fuel is still on, it just has no compression. It's very strange, but it works fine. It's the way they built it. So, I'm going to refill the container and we'll restart and go to our 1000 watt load. Alright, here we are at 1000 watt load. numbers are in. Gasoline not corrected. Fuel consumption is 1172 grams per hour. Diesel 498 grams per hour. That's quite a difference. Even with a 16% correction factor, I think the diesel's really got it beat. But only time will tell.
150 watts. Well, that didn't work at all. So I should have never, I should have never stopped recording because I completely missed the whole uh, 1750 watt run. But that's how much fuel we burned. 1750 watt run started at 3384 and went down to 2500. So completely missed that. I'm sorry. You're just gonna have to uh, live without being able to watch the riveting action of an engine burn fuel. So let me refill and we'll go for the 2250 run. All right, we're right about where we need to be for the final run. We're even pumping a little smoke there as we get itself out. Get our starting weight.
I'll go ahead and do some calculations here. Well, the testing's done, and it's time to go over the results. So, you can see I've expanded the chart a little bit. And uh, we've got some efficiency results here as well. So, our final, final gallons per hour goes something like this. Now, we're going to look at the gasoline corrected numbers. These, these are the actual quantities of fuel used. These numbers have been derived from these. These are... 84%. So we're giving the gasoline a 16% handicap because it was a 16% greater capacity unit. Basically, the engine's going to burn more fuel because it has it's a larger engine. It has a greater capacity. So the numbers go something like this. Gasoline at no load burned 0.36 gallons an hour whereas diesel only burned 0.15. At a thousand watt load, the gas engine burned 0.46 gallons an hour, and the diesel 0.22. At 1750, the gas burned 0.55 gallons an hour, the diesel 0.28. And then at 2250, the gas engine burned 0.6 gallons an hour, the diesel 0.33 gallons an hour. So over here, we can see that at no load, the diesel burns 59% less fuel than the gas engine, corrected numbers. At 1,000 watt load, it burns 52% less fuel. At 17.50, it uh, burns 49% less fuel. And at 22.50, it burns 45% less fuel. Now, here are the, again, gasoline corrected, the numbers for the uh, BTU energy that was consumed during these tests. So we've got... Uh, you know what the units burned the diesel and gas at no load 1000 watt 1750 and 2250 now if we move over to the other side of the column we produced 1 kilowatt hour 1.75 kilowatt hour and 2.25 kilowatt hours of energy those converted into BTUs are 3412 5971 and 7677 BTUs. So that's I'm getting a little confused here, but that's the energy that we produced. So if we take the energy that we produced versus the energy we consumed, here's what our efficiencies look like. At one kilowatt, the gas engine is 5% efficient, the diesel is 11%. At 1.75 kilowatt, the diesel is 8% efficient. The diesel, I said the gas is 8% efficient. The diesel is 15%. At 2.25 kilowatt, the gas is 10% efficient, and the diesel is 16% efficient. So, pretty clear across the uh, the board there. We can see that the gas engine uses, uh, you know, 50% or so more fuel than the diesel. It's interesting that. It looks like it could even be, you know, theoretically, if you could make a gas engine large enough and compete with the diesel that's using the same technology that this one is using, you could get to a point where the uh, efficiencies would actually line up. But that's all theoretical. And I'm no uh, mathematician or anything like that. So I hope you found these results interesting. I know this is a pretty dry video, but it's something that I've wondered about for a while, and I was glad to actually finally make it. So here's a here's a little shot if you want to pause the video and go over my chart and correct me if I've made any errors. I'm sure there are some errors here, but I think I think it's all um, pretty straightforward. I'm sure some people will debate the um, the correction factor here for the gasoline fuel consumption numbers but maybe not you know feel free to leave uh, any kind of uh, constructive criticism uh, in the comment section I would appreciate it and thank you very much for watching